Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, we love these times when we can just gather around your word and feed on purpose from your word that gives us life. And we just open our hearts today and say, Lord, do what you do best. Speak into our hearts. Reveal yourself to us. Do what only your word can do in our lives. We say tonight, that whatever you have in store for us is all right with us. We are hungry for what you have for us. So touch us, transform us by this word. As I speak, I thank you that I am anointed to teach your word, to preach your word with simplicity, with understanding, and your people are equally anointed with an anointing of understanding and courage to hear and to do your word. We understand that wisdom is the main thing. So this evening we're choosing to get wisdom and in everything we get, we get understanding. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And our wonderful people said, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, wonderful. Miranda is on. Wow, from work. Bless you, ma'am. Um, thank you for joining. Welcome, Richard. We appreciate you joining the broadcast. Okay, so today's Bible study, I want to talk about becoming an overcomer. Becoming an overcomer. Every person, every person who experiences any kind of measure of success in any form has overcome something. So what we're trying to do in today's Bible study is to help you understand certain fundamental things. These things are essentially fundamental, fundamental things which will enable us to build a life of consistent victory upon. It will enable us to understand what it takes to become the overcomer that you have been made in Christ Jesus. Um, we've been talking about kingship and we've been talking about the, the, the fact that we are called to be servant kings because the life of dominion is a life of overcoming. The story of success in any endeavor is nothing more than the story of how you have overcome some things in order to get to where you are. All of life, there is no real, tangible, um, um, or, or authentic success without overcoming something. Now, the truth is that Jesus has already overcome everything that we need to overcome, but there is a process to be in a position where we become the victor that Jesus has made you into. Uh, I hope you understand that. We are already like Christ, but at the same time, we are becoming like Christ. We are already healed, but at the same time, we are working out our healing into our bodies. We are already saved, but we are also outworking our salvation. It is the same thing with what I am saying tonight. You are already victorious in Christ, but there needs to be um, a certain mindset, a certain understanding that allows you and me to outwork our, our victory, to get to the place where we outwork our victory. And so overcoming for the believer is not an attempt to try to win because we've already won in Christ. Overcoming for, our, for, for a believer is manifesting the victory that we already have. If you are able to just type in the comments box, we have already won. We don't want anyone tuning into this and being in a place where they are thinking that I've got to do some things in order to become an overcomer. That is not what we are literally really saying. We are saying that you are already an overcomer and therefore there needs to be a process, a willingness to embrace certain mindset, a willingness to have certain ways of thinking that then allows us to become what Jesus Christ has already made us. So we are already overcomers. If you are able to just type in the comments box, we have already won. We have already won. And so what we're trying to do is because we have already won, it now becomes our responsibilities, our responsibility as people who God has, Jesus won that victory and then he gave us that victory. It is now our responsibility to manifest that victory which he won on our behalf. And so tonight I want to talk to you about three fundamental things that we need to get an understanding on 
in order to operate as the overcomers that we already are. Just three fundamental things. We will do some Bible study today. Three fundamental things that I think that before we can, you know, sometimes I, I, am, I am so aware that when I talk about things like this, we go to, oh, there are, in the world that we live in, there is so much information out there um, from social media, so many kinds, so yeah, all kinds of information about how to win or how to be successful or this or, and, 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 and there, there is room for all of that. But I really want to, uh, I feel a responsibility to ensure that for us as believers, the foundation that we build upon is not some motivational speech that we picked up on a podcast somewhere. All those things have their place. It is very important that what we build on is a solid foundation of the word of God. God has an idea. God has a system that he has set up for your success. What the world often does is that they, 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 pick off certain things and pick on, put some things that are marketable. And um, and we don't want to do that as Christians. We want to get the whole counsel of the Lord. So uh, I, 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 th these are based on scripture. These are scripture. I, I, I want you to pay attention to the things that we are talking about because they are very fundamental. They are very found foundational. And if you get a hold of them, you will have the right foundation to build anything upon. If you build on anything else, it is only a matter of time, and I believe this with all my heart, before it comes crashing down or disappoints you. But when we build on the word of God, we are building on incorruptible seed. Okay, so here are three fundamental things I think that we need to understand in order to truly become the overcomers that we already are. Number one, you have to understand what you need to overcome. In other words, what when we say you are becoming an overcomer, what do you we imply that you are overcoming something? And what we need to get an understanding of is what is it that I am overcoming? The book of Mark chapter four, the book of Mark chapter four, never go into a fight without knowing who the enemy is. Okay. Paul says, when I fight, I don't fight as if I'm beating the air. It is important. It is important that we don't live our lives ignorant of the, the devices of the enemy. Many of us can, it is, it, uh, many believers live life ignorant of the real challenge that they face. If you don't know what the stumbling blocks that you are facing are or what they are, you're not going to have an effective strategy to overcome. So at best, overcoming will be luck, will be based on trial and error because you are not aware of what it really takes or what it is that you are fighting. When you don't know your enemy, you end up fighting your friends. Okay? So look at this. Number, Mark chapter 4, verse 18 says, now, now these are the ones sown among thorns. We know this is a very famous scripture for anyone who has been a Christian for a couple of moments. Um, it says, now we now these are the ones who are sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So notice that the word was sown, but in this particular situation, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things entered into the same space as the word. And they got to the place where those things choked out the word. Now, listen to why this, this story or this parable is important to what we're talking about today. Everything in this world started with the word of God. Okay? Genesis 1 famously puts it this way. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was, sorry, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, sorry, not Genesis 1. Making John chapter 1, making reference to Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Everything 
that we see in our world began with the word of God. The book of Hebrews also tells us that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The best that God has for you, the best of our world is in the word, okay? The best that God has for you is in the word of God. Now, don't listen to me. You know how I always say this? I say this because when, when, when we're preaching to Christians, and you hear world, world and word, there's certain words that we hear that I think just kind of triggers us and we just go into church mode. And I like to pull us out of church mode because I feel like if you go into your default church mode, you might not, you might put on religious ears and just hear stuff with this ear that you don't hear with this ear. So if you are able to do whatever you can to just come with fresh ears to listen to what I have to say. The word of God is the path to your best expression. Let me put it a different way. The word of God is the pathway to the best expression of who you are. The word of God is incorruptible seed. And so God has designed the word of God, releases the word of God into our lives. Because if, if I am going to become the best Cheeto that I will need to be, it will not come out of university. It will not come out of my my wonderful podcast. It will not come out of my family. It will come out of the word of God. The best person that I am or that I can become is not in anything else or anywhere else, but in the word of God. Now, the enemy knows this. And so he puts things in your way that become stumbling blocks to the advancement of the word of God in my life. Stumbling blocks to the word in your life are stumbling blocks to your success, okay? Stumbling blocks to the word of God in your lives are stumbling blocks to your success. And really what I'm trying to say in essence is the, the, you have to understand that the thing in order to really become a genuine overcomer what you will need to know how to do is to overcome the things that challenge the word of God in your life. Because the best life that you have, the best life that you can, you know how people say, I'm living my best life. You, 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 I think there's a song, there's a song that, um, that talks about that. Um, your best life is in the word of God. It doesn't matter how great your life is, it can be better if it is aligned to the word of God. And so what the enemy does is he puts certain things in your way or in the way of the word of God flourishing in your life. And so a lot of what we're talking about today has to do with understanding that if you are going to overcome, you're going to need to put some fundamental things in place um, to stop the word of God from, uh, 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 to, to stop anything that is hindering the advancement of the word of God in your life. Now, if you understand what I'm trying to say, would you just give me a why or, a, 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 you know, type a why in your, uh, to, for, for, for yes, or type something so I know, give me a thumbs up or something so I know that you understand what I am saying, because uh, there is no point in doing a Bible study if nobody understands, okay? So it, in order to become an overcomer, I'm challenging you to say that um, we need to learn that the key thing that we are looking to know how to overcome are the things that challenge the word of God in our lives because the best of your life is in the word of God, okay? The best of your life is not in your education. The best of your life is not in your upbringing. The best of your life is not in the place that you, you grew up. The best of your life is, from, is in the word of God. So your victory is in the word of God. If you understand that, say amen and amen. So let me, in this scripture, then we find three things. We find three things. That, that Jesus is saying challenged the word of God, okay? Three key things that challenged the word of God. He says, number one, and I'll talk about what they are because I want us to get an understanding because if we have victory over these, you will be an overcomer. It's as simple as that. Number one 
thing that challenges the word of God, it is the cares of this world. These are the things that have no eternal significance. It is important that you know that you are an eternal being. Once you are born, you will live forever. Your life, you, you were born into this world. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. So, so um, the cares of this world are those things that are, are, are of no eternal significance. It doesn't mean that the cares of this world are, are, are of no significance. No, I'm saying that it is of no eternal significance. These are the things to do with what you eat, what you wear, what you drink where you live, what they said, what they didn't say, the job, the businesses, the career. These things are important. They have their place. However, they are not, um, most of the time, they're not satisfied. The enemy, um, they, they, they become something to overcome when they, they don't stay in their place. When they take the place of the word of God, the scripture says, that the, the the cares of this world, scripture, scripture was talking about the cares of this world. It talks about how the cares of the world choked out the word of God because the cares of this world want to get to the place where it takes the place of God's word in your in your heart. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And if you're going to become an overcomer, you will need to learn that the cares of this world need to be dominated by you. Or, do, or they're going to dominate you. If you do not dominate the cares of this world, they will dominate you. If they are not overcome, they will take up a disproportionate amount of space in your heart. They will de dethrone God and enthrone themselves. God sows the word of God. The sower sows the word of God in your life, regardless of the state that you are in, because he believes in the word. But what the enemy wants you to do is to elevate the cares of this world above the word of God. What you are going to eat is very important, but it is important that you don't elevate what you're going to eat above the word of God. The career that you have is very important, but it is important that you don't elevate your career above the word of God. Your health, your physical body, the way you look, it is very important, but it is important that it is not elevated above the word of God. It is important that we as Christians, we know how to overcome the cares of this world, where to put what you know the right place for your money, the right place for your fears, the right place for your house, the right place for the things that are only pertinent here in this world. I think one of the problems with the church and believers in our time is that we have allowed the cares of this world to determine what we do with the word of God, as opposed to allowing the word of God to influence what we do with the cares of this world. Many people only come to God and stay with God on the basis of how they believe God is helping them deal with the cares of this world. In other words, in, and, 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 well, and this is why when things are good, it is very easy to back out from the presence of God. But when things are challenging, it is, it is very easy to find us in the presence of God. And the reason really is not because of how we are exalting God, but is where we place the cares of this world. So in the good times, most people don't see their need for God uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself because the cares of this world are really priority in their lives. And, um, and unless they need God to fix a problem, they don't need God. And that should not be you. The overcomer needs to understand that nothing takes precedence over the word of God. Would you type that in the comments box so I know you understand? Just say, nothing takes precedence over the word of God. OK, nothing takes precedence over the word of God. There is nothing that you need. There is nothing that you are lacking right now. There is nothing that you have been praying for for ages that and doesn't appear to be showing up in your life. There is absolutely nothing that should take precedence over the word of God. OK, there is no need.
that you have, that you take precedence over the word of God. And the overcomer needs to understand that. To overcome, you need to be learned to be, learn to be free from the cares of this world. That is a profound, that is a powerful place to be, to be in the place where you are free from the cares of this world. That does not mean that, it, it, that does not mean being in a place where you don't need to eat. You know, don't be deep like that. Or being in a place where you don't feel like you need a house or being in a place where you don't like cars. That's your problem. What I'm trying to say is it is, it, it is being free. Paul put it profoundly. He says, I've learned to be content when I have plenty and when I have little, I think I quoted this scripture on Sunday, I, I, I have learned to be content regardless of my circumstances. And he says, I, and this is why I have learned. He says, because, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, he understands that he is in this place where it is not the cares of his life that are determining his status of contentment. It is, it is, he has no, he knows where to put those things and where the word of God needs to be. Here is a question for you. Here is a question for you. Uh, 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 where is the word of God compared to the cares of this world in your life? Okay, let me bring it home. Let me bring it home. Right now, today, there are some things that you need. Okay. The, right now, in this place, there, is, there are some things that you need. That, that you might have even tuned into this broadcast because you need something and you want to hear from God. That is wonderful. But it is important. The challenge I'm, I'm, I'm putting out to you is when you compare what you need to the word of God about what you need, where does the word of God rank? Okay. If you are going to be an overcomer, you have got to learn where, learn how to put the cares of this world in their right place. Are the cares of this world guiding you or is the word guiding you? Are you being led by your stomach or are you being led by the word? Okay. Are you being led by your wallet or are you being led by the word? It is a very subtle thing, and, and, and please remember, these messages are not for another person. They are for you. Why don't you type in the comments box, this message is for me, okay? Because it is you that I am believing God that will be, is you who I believe will be an overcomer. If you're going to be an overcomer, learn what to do and, and thank God for the grace of God that helps us with this. If you're going to be an overcomer, learn where to place the word of God. Because uh, Sorry, where to place the word of God compared to the cares of this world. Because if the cares of this world are choked, if the, if, if, if the priorities are wrong, it will choke out the word of God. Amen? How, uh, how are you... How are you um, how are you prioritizing your work compared to prioritizing um, the word? How are you uh, uh, prioritizing your business compared to how you prioritize um, the business of the kingdom? Um, is there a difference? Are there is there any place where they meet? You know, uh, your time with the Lord. Are you with me so far? These are the things that choke out the word. The, the word you heard at church on Sunday. How much of it do you remember? How much of the word are you keeping? How much of the word has been stolen by your circumstances? How much of the faith that you left church with has been silenced by an email that you got about something that is, uh, uh, that is, that is just about the cares of this world? Again, let me say the cares of this world are important. Those things are important. The question I am asking is how important it is compared to the word of God in your life. Overcomers know where to place the word of God compared to every other thing that they are dealing with, the cares of this world. Number two thing in that scripture is the deceitfulness of riches. Okay, the deceitfulness of riches. This is something that both the rich and the poor need to overcome. In order to become an overcomer, remember, we're talking about fundamental things, foundational things for us as believers. This is not self-help. This is not a motivational speech. This is the word of God. 
foundational things that you and I need to put in place in order to overcome whatever we face in life. The scripture has outlined these things for us. And Mark 4 gives us another thing that chokes out the word of God, which contains our life. He says, it is the deceitfulness of riches. This is something that we all need to consider whether you consider yourself poor or whether you consider yourself rich, regardless of what your definition of poor is or what your definition of rich is. To be an overcomer, you would need to understand that riches have a deceptive pull on both the poor and the rich. Okay, I am not against being rich, I am quite against being poor, but the point is you have to understand that there is a deceitfulness of riches that impacts both the poor and the rich. The poor is deceived by thinking, if only I was rich, then maybe these things would be in place. The rich is deceived into thinking, well, now that I am rich, I no longer need these things in place. The deceitfulness of riches can choke the word of God. This is a pool that we need to overcome. We need to get to the place where we understand where the source of our life is. Because the truth is that whether you are rich or you are poor, success in life is a product of God's word. Okay? Whether you are rich or poor, remember success is not according to the world's definition. Success is according to heaven's definition. You are successful, not because those on social media say you are. You are successful because when heaven looks at your agenda, when they look at the fruit of your life compared to the days that were written in his book, there is a correlation. They match up. That's what success looks like. And success does not come from the money you have or the money you don't. Success comes from the word. Anything that suggests otherwise is a hurdle that you would need to learn to overcome. If you understand that so far, say amen. Thank you for those who are joining us on, on Instagram. We appreciate you. Welcome, Rob. Welcome, Hair Architecture. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and, and those on, on, on YouTube and Facebook, we appreciate you. But I hope you can hear me. I, I, I am saying to really pay attention to the, 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 the deceitfulness of riches. It is something that all of us need to pay attention to because riches can deceive you into thinking that there is some hope in that thing that chokes out the word of God. The poor man can become... You know, and you, you, you've heard stories of this, how, how, how somebody, because of the lack of, let's just, just take, a, take financial riches, because of the absence of finances, they put themselves in a place where they turn away from the word of God in order to get a hold of these things. And the problem is when you do stuff like that, you will end up like Gehazi, where, where you pursue riches um, and leave the word of God behind and what you will end up with is leprosy. Remember the story of Gehazi. Le the, the Naaman, yeah, his name is Naaman. The, the, amazing, um, the amazing general comes to Elisha, gets healed, offers the prophet some gifts and, 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 and amazing things. And Elijah says, don't worry about it. Take it. I don't need any of those things. He tells Gehazi, his servant, we don't want those things. Tell him to take it back. The servant obviously thinks he knows better and decides to chase this man down to get those riches for himself. But then he collects the riches. And if you read the story, you find that he ends up with leprosy because the reality is you might get a hold of the riches but if you put the word of God down in favor of these things that you are pursuing, you will end up with something that you don't really want. Are you with me so far? And the deceitfulness of riches can choke the word of God where your real life is. The deceitfulness of riches can get you to the place where you, the word of God is, is made void of its power to come to pass in your life the deceitfulness of riches. What is it that that is, that is you know, I, I think I mentioned this when we talked about this at church, how the deceitfulness of riches in our country, the fact that we live in a, in a nation where you, 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 you know, 
poverty is being on the dole. Poverty is being a place where the government is giving you money. That's what we call poverty. And so we see ourselves as a rich nation. And many times you kind of feel because there is all of that, there is no need for God. That is a deceit. That, that, is, that is, that's what we're calling the deceitfulness of riches. Because though your real life, the life of this nation, the best that we can be as a nation is in the word of God. And if riches are turning you away from them, then that's a problem. I, I must move on. And then he goes on to say other things. This is just any other thing that is juxtaposed to the word of God in your life. To become an overcomer, you need to understand who uh, you, you understand that anything that contradicts God's word is a problem that needs to be overcome because all of your life is in the word of God. If you are able to, would you type that in the comments box? Just say, all of my life is in the word of God. What is it that you need to overcome? Which category does it fall into? In Matthew 13, Jesus tells the parable of how the good seed is sown in a field and then the enemy shows up and sows tares or weed in the same field. That's a picture of what the enemy wants to do in your life. God releases his word. He sends us his word. But the enemy sows things that dilute or that, or that attempt to dilute the effect of the word of God in our lives. And to be an overcomer, we need to learn how to recognize these things that can choke out the word because the, your life is in the word. I can't say that enough. Your victory, your life is in the word of God. The scripture puts it this way, my son, pay attention to my words for they are life to those that hear them and health to all their flesh. All of your life is in the word. When I was learning to drive, the, the driving instructor said to me, he said to me, the first time I started learning, he says, your life is in your ears. As you're driving, as we're going to start driving on the motorway, I need you to know that your, your, your safety is in your ability to hear what I am saying. It is the same thing with our lives. We can get clever with ourselves and forget that our life is in the word. Our life started in the beginning with the word and God intends for your life to finish with the word. Number two, two, number two. So number one, I said, if you're going to be an overcomer, we need to understand what it is that we are overcoming. And we said, we need to learn that we are overcoming the, the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and just any other thing that is juxtaposed to the word of God. Those are the fundamental things that we need to overcome. Number two thing that we need to overcome is to understand, or the, 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 the number two thing that we need to get to, get to grips with in order to understand what it takes to overcome is that we need to understand the tools for overcoming. If you will become an overcomer, you will need to know what is your tool what do I use? What is the tool that I have been given to truly become an overcomer? If you don't know the tool that you're supposed to use for overcoming, you will spend your life learning how to use other tools which don't give you victory. So many of us are spending our lives worrying, but you know the reality is that worrying never solved a problem in your life. It gave you high blood pressure. So you are attacking life trying to overcome by staying up at night to worry. When in reality, that is not the tool that God has designated to help you with. And so when you bring worry as a tool to help you overcome a, a dilemma in your life, what you end up being is being the person who brings a knife to a machine gun fight. And you're wondering why 20 years of you worrying, you still have not solved anything. You're only 20 and you're looking like you're 72. Because you're worrying yourself to your grave. Are you with me so far tonight? I hope this is helping you. If this is helping you, give me a thumbs up. So, so there is a tool that God has designated. God has designated a particular tool to help you win in this life to help you overcome. First John 5, 4 tells us what that tool is. It says, for whatever is born of God is victorious 
over the world. If you read from verse 1, you will know that the person who is born of God is a person who believes in Jesus Christ or who believes in the word. And so the Bible says that those who believe in the word, someone say, that's me. Come on, type, that's me. So I know I'm talking to the right people. He says, those who believe in the word, these are those who are victorious over the world. What do we mean when we say the word? Remember 1 John 2, 16 says, uh, it, 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 1, John, 1 John 2, 16 tells us what we find in the word, and we won't go there for time, but it says, it says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Again, is just making reference to the same things that Jesus mentions in Mark chapter 4. These three same things are the things that choke out the word of God. And that that everything you find in the world apart from God, in one way or the other, seeks to choke out the word of God. Uh, and all of our challenges in life, all of the things that we need to learn to overcome in life somehow fall into these three categories, the cares of this world or the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the desire for other things, the pride of life, or the deceitfulness of riches. These are the things that we find in the world, and these are the things that we must seek to overcome. And so the Apostle John here is saying that those who are born of God, they are victorious over the world, and we know that the world contains these three things, and he says that they overcome the lust of the eyes. In other words, they overcome the lust of the flesh. When you overcome the world, it means that you overcome the loss of the eye. You have dominion over the loss of the flesh. You have dominion over the pride of life. And then he tells us how they overcome. He says, and this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. The key to victory in life is faith. The key to overcoming redundancy, to overcoming that relationship issue, the key to overcoming that low self-esteem, the key to overcoming that business that appears to have been stuck in the same rut for so long, the key to overcoming that staleness in your walk with God, the key to overcoming, to, to turning your life around, that health challenge, that spiritual challenge, whatever it is that you need to overcome, that, it, it, listen, it, it, it is your faith that is the victory that overcomes the world. Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us what faith is. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It says, now faith is the assurance. It is the confirmation, the title deed of the things that we hope for. Being the proof of things that we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. God has designed life in such a way that it is your faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is your faith that will make you an overcomer. Are you, are, are you hearing me? It is your faith that will make you an overcomer. It is the, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, don't complicate matters. God has made it really simple. Show me someone who is described as an overcomer in any way. And I will show you someone who has believed something that they could not yet see. You will not overcome God's way in your power, in your might, by your education, by your connections. You will not overcome God's way except by faith. You cannot be an, a real overcomer if you do not practice the discipline of faith or practice the discipline of perceiving as real that which is not currently visible to the eyes. Faith is a muscle. Faith is a muscle. You have to be purposeful about building your faith. And that's why I congratulate you for being here today because you are practicing, you are feeding your faith. It is a muscle that needs to be fed. Practice seeing your future. Keep seeing your future until you see, until what you see is more than what you can see right now. Do you get what I mean? What you see with your mind eyes, with your mind's eye needs to be more real than what you face in front of you right now. That is what faith looks like. Faith, faith looks like seeing perceiving as real something that is not 
evident right now to the eyes. Practice seeing your feet, your future. Keep seeing your future until it's more real than what you see here. The scripture talks about how Abraham saw himself with a son. God spoke to him about children as much as the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. God spoke to him about this so much and he got a picture of it that even when he got this one child, the scripture says even when God asked him to surrender that child, he had no qualms with it because he understood. Hebrews eleven nineteen understood that if God, he reasoned, the scripture says that God would have to raise the dead because his vision of what is to be was more alive life than his vision of what he was facing. Feed your faith. Learn to see what you can't see. In the middle of sickness, learn to see healing. When others say there is a casting down, learn to see how there is a lifting up. When others say it is not possible, practice seeing possibility. When others are declaring Brexit is going to be doom and gloom, practice seeing a world, our nation, not in disaster and doom and gloom. Practice on purpose seeing that which is not clear or perspective or, or, or per, uh, perceived right now in the natural. It takes practice. It's not going to happen by itself. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. You will become an overcomer when you become skillful at working in faith. Walking in faith, I mean. Walking in faith is a skill that can be developed. Listen, don't complicate matters. You know, you know, as Christians, we like to complicate matters. You have everything that you need to overcome any situation in life. Remember in Mark chapter 5 verse 36, Jesus is going to raise somebody from, the, they came to Jesus to tell him about a, a, a young girl that was died, that, that was really sick as they were go, as he was going to the house. They brought news that the girl has now died and there is no need to bother the master. And Jesus turned and said, don't be afraid, only believe. Because the only thing you need in life, regardless of how dire the situation is, you need the word of God with you and you need faith, the ability to believe the word of God that is with you. That's all you need. Don't let anything or anyone tell you otherwise. All you need in this life is faith. This is why you owe it to yourself to discover what faith is. Don't take my definition of faith. Take time to discover what faith really is. Okay? You owe it to yourself to discover what faith is and how it works. You must don't accept any thoughts that isn't faith-filled. Don't accept any posture that is not faith-filled because you are accepting a, a, a posture of defeat. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If your education it is, if you are, if your, if if your your education uh, um, is juxtaposed to your faith, you don't have the victory that overcomes the world. Because the victory that overcomes the world is not your degree; it is your faith. The victory that overcomes the world is not your ability; it is your faith. So investigate what faith is. Don't think, you know, uh, and feed yourself the word. Go somewhere. Come to a good church. I said come to a good church because I believe we are a good church. But, but, but if you are, you know, be a part of a place where they are teaching you the whole counsel of the word of God because you want to be in a place where you're operating in real faith because your faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We could talk so much more about faith, but I'll leave it at that. Your faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Someone say, my faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And you have faith right now. You have faith. He has given us the measure of faith. So at any point in time, you just need to build your faith. You just need to work on your ability to believe. Someone say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. The final thing you need to understand in order to become an, a, 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 an, an overcomer, remember, we're talking about fundamental things that you need to understand as a fundamental. And then you can start putting all the other life skill stuff on top of it. But these are scriptural fundamental things that will help you become an overcomer from the scripture. 
Uh, number three, understand the source and the power of your faith. Okay, be very clear about what 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 is the source and what is the power of your faith. Don't you know? Some people just be. Um, some people are just are just, uh, or sometimes you think that being positive is faith. Being positive is good, but it might not always be faith. Okay, being positive is good, but it might not always be faith. In fact, many people are positive because they are full of fear and they're full of fear because they have no real foundation for their positivity. What is the reason you are positive today? Are you just being positive because you heard that when you're positive, good things, all those things have their place. Good things come to you when you're positive. No, we, we want to go deeper than that. Amen. Because I, I've been positive in some times and bad things happened. Come on now. Anybody ever been there? Where you've been positive, you were thinking positively and the worst case scenario happened and it shocked you. Because we thought that faith is positive thinking, but faith is not positive thinking. Faith, there is a source and there is a power behind your faith. I don't know if anybody has ever been there where they were being positive and, and, and it didn't work out well. Come on, just encourage me so I know that I'm not the only unbeliever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so when we talk about faith, we're not talking about being positive. Thank you. Yeah, we have some real folk in the house. When, when, we, when we talk about faith, we're not talking about being positive. No, being positive is good, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about understanding the source, the source of your positivity. Why are you positive? That what is the what is the power behind your positivity? And so, if you want to be if you want to be great at using your faith. You need to understand the source and the power of your faith. What is it that makes this position of positivity or faith, of expectancy, a powerful place? Because most people have faith in having faith or faith in the written word. What is it about the written word that gives you confidence? Amen. What is the substance of your faith? First John 5. First John 5. Look at verse 5. John clarifies. It says, who, it is, who is it that is victorious? You're going to get this in the notes. So if you don't have your Bibles, don't worry about it. You're going to get the notes shortly. It says, who is it that is victorious? Um, or the Amplified says, who is it that is victorious over or that conquers the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God, who adheres to, um, the Amplified says, he who adheres to, who trusts in and who relies on that fact. In other words, John is saying that the one who overcomes the world is the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God, the one who adheres to the fact that Jesus is the son of God. They trust in the fact that Jesus is the son of God and they rely on the fact that Jesus is the son of God. He says, this is the one that is victorious over the world. He says, this is the one that is victorious over the world. The one that believes that Jesus is the son of God. Now, I, I, put, it in the, in, I put it in the nose because the reality is even the devil believes that Jesus is the son of God. So, so there is something that you and I need to understand about Jesus being the son of God that makes us victorious. And so it's good to believe that Jesus is the son of God, but we want to know what is it about this son of God that makes us confident that we have the victory. Are you with me so far? If you're with me, give me a thumbs up. We're coming to a close. Revelation chapter 12. But give me a thumbs up so I know that you are here and we're coming, you know, you, you understand where I am um, and you're still following me. Thank you. Thank you to those on YouTube. Let me see what people are saying. Amen and amen. The key to my turn, uh, to turn, turn my life around is faith. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. This is big. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they defeated and they have defeated him, talking about the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. That's what the New Living, how, how the New Living Translation puts it. If you're going to overcome the world, and if you're going to overcome the God of this world, you know, God, Satan is the God, little g, of this world. You're going to need to uh, 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 need the kind of faith that looks like this. 
It looks a certain way. It is the kind of faith that um, the faith that overcomes the world is the kind of faith that is based on the assurance that comes from knowing that Jesus died and shed his blood. That's why they said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Uh, in other words, your faith needs to be a faith that knows that the blood of Jesus tells of the fact that somebody has given their lives. When blood is spilled, life is spilled. And they overcame because there was something in their faith that knew, that held on to the fact that the Son of Man gave his life for them. Uh, if you're going to, you, you would need to have a kind of faith that is truly, that truly understood that the blood of Jesus was spilled on your behalf, was spilled instead of your own blood. Faith that overcomes the world is faith that testifies of what the blood of Jesus has done. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb because they had an understanding that Jesus has shed his life for them, has shed his blood for them. They, they overcame by the word, their testimony, because they had a testimony of what the blood of Jesus has done. Uh, and so a faith that overcomes is a faith that is confident and constantly testifies of what the blood of Jesus has done. It is a faith that speaks the same thing as the blood, uh, 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 as, as what the blood of Jesus says. It is the faith that stands in the courts of accusations. If, in fact, if you read the scripture, he's saying that the enemy accused the, the children of Israel day and night, and the way that they were able to overcome him is by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony because the, the faith that overcomes the world and the God of this world is a faith that stands in the court where accusations are brought against them to testify of what the blood has achieved, even in the face of constant accusations by the enemy. If you're with me so far, say amen. Am I preaching to myself? Uh, uh, be, be, because the faith that overcomes this world is a faith that is always testifying. You know what that, that word testify is a legal term where it's like standing in the, in the courts and there is an accuser of the brethren who is pointing fingers at you and saying, you don't deserve this or you shouldn't be this. or you are, and, and yet you're testifying of what the blood. That's what happens when we plead the blood. When we plead the blood, we are saying it's like standing in the court of law and they're asking, you've heard the, what the accusations are against you. What? How do you plead? Do you plead guilty or not guilty? We overcome this world by pleading the blood. Glory be to God. We overcome in our world by being people who understand that our confidence is because somebody shed the blood. I didn't come to defend myself. I didn't come to prove myself in the courts of this life. I came to take the victory that Jesus has already won for me. So if you ask me guilty or not guilty, I will say I plead the blood. I don't plead guilty. I don't plead not guilty. I plead the blood. They overcame him by the blood and they overcame by the word of their testimony. The fact that they were willing to testify that they are people who, 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 who the blood has been shared for. Your faith needs to be that kind of faith. And your faith needs to be that kind of faith that the faith that overcomes this world is a faith that is lived out actively without the fear of death. They overcame by the blood of the lamb, the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Your faith, the kind of faith that overcomes this world, is a faith that is actively lived out without the fear of death. In Joshua chapter, chapter 10, there's a story that I love so much, and I put it in the notes. But in Joshua chapter 10, Joshua won this amazing victory. If you're, if you're with me so far, say amen. We're almost done. We're almost done. Thank you for your patience. Um, it, 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 Joshua won this amazing victory over these kings. He won this amazing victory over these kings and these five kings. He, and, and the scripture says he got these five kings. And it's, I'll read it out to you. Joshua chapter 10, verse 24. So it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua. These were enemy kings that were coming against him and the Gibeonites. Not my cousins, the Gibe, Gibe, B, okay? Not my people. Excuse me, that was a funny joke. But anyway, anyway, he says, he says, <laughs> so so it was it was when they brought when they brought out those kings that Joshua called for all the men of Israel 
and said to the captains of the men of war who went to him, come near, and he said to, to them, come near, put your feet on the necks of this king. And they drew near and they put their feet on their necks. Then Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Now that was such a prophetic statement, not just for the people. It was also a prophetic statement for you and I. Joshua literally means savior. Joshua is a type of Jesus Christ. And so what Joshua did is he gets these kings and then calls his generals, a type of you and I. Jesus wins the battle or victory over these kings, calls you and I and asks us to put our, our feet over their necks because this is the posture that you and I need to have in life. Everything that contradicts what you know to be the will of God as stipulated in the word of God is under your feet. Joshua told them, come, put your feet on the necks of this king. And I need you to remember that every time you are looking to fight, you need not be fearful. You need to be courageous because just as your feet is on the neck of this enemy, this is how you will subdue every enemy that comes against you. Let me tell you the truth. If you ask Jesus about whether or not you are born to be an overcomer, he will remind you of this scripture where he, he asked you, he won the victory and then asked you to put your feet on the neck of the enemy because you are born to have victory. I want to encourage encourage you to take a posture of victory in your life, not because of how great you are, not because of how brilliant you are, but we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We overcome because Joshua, Jesus, Jesus has won the victory and he has given you the privilege to put your foot over the neck of the enemy. Don't let the enemy convince you to take your foot out. Your foot, you have victory over sickness and disease, victory over over poverty and lack, victory over fear, victory over depression, anything that isn't the will of God for your life, do not cower, do not bow, do not, if it is in this world, you have victory over it because of what Jesus has done. I'm going to stop preaching there because I preach myself happy. You have victory. Come on, type in the box, say, I have victory. Jesus won that victory for me. I want you to go read that scripture, read that Joshua chapter 10 and see the amazing victories and see what God is saying to you. Everything that contradicts your sound mind, everything that contradicts your sound health, everything that contradicts your, your provision, everything that contradicts the will of God, Jesus has won the victory and he has given you an open invitation to put your feet over its neck. So the next time sickness and disease comes over your life, remember this, that Jesus won the victory and my posture is not won. I'm not the guy who falls down in the ring, knocked out and stays down. No, I'm the guy whose neck, whose feet is over the neck of the enemy. I'm spitting all over my laptop because I'm excited about this. You have the victory. <laughs> you didn't need to know that. I'm sorry. You have the victory. Let me tell you, you have the victory. You have the victory. Jesus won that victory for you. So, so I encourage you, you know, um, work on your faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. The, the world. Invest in your faith. Don't let Jesus said to Peter, the enemy has asked to sift you as wheat. Um, uh, 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 and, and I've prayed for you. I've prayed that your faith will not fail you. Because regardless of what you, what you go through, if you fall down and still have your faith, you're going to get up. If you if you if you go bankrupt and still have your faith, you're going to win again. If you lose your job and you still believe you're going to come to the top, you will build great companies because of your faith. You will overcome the limitations of your birth because of your faith. You will overcome the limitations of your family because of your birth. You will overcome things that your 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 generational people have not been able to think about. You will go beyond if you will allow yourself to perceive as real that which has not been made manifest yet. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Our team are going to post the notes. We're going to post the notes right now. I want to ask you to download those notes. 
I want to ask you to make sure you look at these notes. I've got some questions that I've put on there that I'm saying, think about these for yourself. Make them practical. What does faith look like? What, do, what is it that I need to overcome? Which category does it fall under? How do I overcome it? How do I apply my faith? Ask yourself these questions because they, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Has this been helpful to anybody here today? Let me see what you're saying. Has this been helpful? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have been blessed. Download those notes. Get a hold of these notes. You know, just kind of look over them. Remember, you are victorious because of your faith. Doesn't matter how long the challenge has lasted. Don't let time deceive you. You are victorious because of your faith. Don't let time, um, you know, time is not as great as the word of God. Don't let it choke out the word of God. You are victorious because of your faith. Go back to believing God again. Allow yourself to dream in alliance with the word, in, a, in alignment with the word of God, because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Father, I pray for every person who is listening, every person who is tuned in on these different channels. I know that you never bring your word without purpose. And so I speak to every seed of faith in the lives of our hearers, of our viewers, we just release the grace of God. Lord, I release that gift of faith. Increase their faith. That because of their faith, they will break every chain, every barrier that has held them down. That this will be a season of great exploration of your word of possibility. That this will not be a season of survival. This will be a season of conquering. This will be a season to overcome. This will be a season to dominate. I do not call you survivors. I call you overcomers because in Christ Jesus, you are more than an overcomer. I remind you of the great things that have been spoken about you in times past. God has spoken great words concerning you. Do not allow the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches or the desire for other things choke out the word of God. Bring that word to the forefront. Put his word in your mouth. Hide his word in your heart. You will come out on the other side because this is the victory that overcomes the world. I congratulate you that even though you have lost some things, even though some things have not been working because you have hidden the word of God in your heart, I prophesy over, over you in this season that this will be a season of great victory, that the Lord will vindicate you. He will vindicate you and show that he is a righteous God who keeps his word to a thousand generations. The Lord will do it for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. If you believe, say amen. So I know I'm praying to somebody. You have that victory in Jesus' name. You have that victory in the name that is above every name. Listen, let's come before God with our giving. Let's bring our best gift. Our team are going to post our account details. They will post our PayPal link right now on YouTube and on Facebook. Sorry for those of those who are on Instagram. I hope you were able to join us because they cut us off um, after an hour. But I'm glad that you are here. Why don't you just sow a seed? Remember what we said, faith is active. Faith is active. If you know anything that we are called to do, I am praying that you never just allow yourself to be a believer who knows faith here, but does not practice faith in action. Giving is an opportunity to practice faith in action. You spend your money in places that you believe it is worthy of spending in. It is what you believe. You spend your money at Tesco's to buy bread because you are confident you believe in the bread. You spend your money and you want to keep Tesco's open. Amen. You spend your money in, in the places where you find value. We must demonstrate faith or continue to demonstrate faith by our willingness to give into things of great value, things that are eternal. Don't allow yourself to sow into things that to, to spend because you're going to be sowing, whether you know it or not. You're going to either be sowing in the house of Fraser or whatever, Primark or Primani or Armani or, you know, Gucci, wherever you spend, you're going to be sowing seed 
um, you might as well make sure you are an investor in the kingdom of God. So bring your best gift. Maybe if you are if you are part of our church, part of Radiant City City London, why don't you bring your tithe? We so we 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 give our tithes. Um, if you're not a part of our church, your tithe belongs in your local church. Um, you are welcome to give um, an offering, but um, let's give into what God has called us to do. Let it register when you give. It, it, you know, it's not just the, the church bank account that receives something registers in heaven. Scripture says about Cornelius that his giving was recorded in heaven. Your giving and your prayers have come up to me, the scripture says, as a memorial. Let your giving be active. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your consistency in giving. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. He is faithful. He is faithful. Faithful is he that promised. He never gives you an instruction that he doesn't intend to follow through on. So when he says give and it shall be given back to you, he intends to follow through on that. When his scripture says seed time and harvest shall never cease, he intends to follow through on that. So don't grow weary in doing good. Don't get tired of giving. We give consistently. Make it a part of your life and watch the Lord do amazing things. I'm excited about where God is taking us. We're, we're looking to raise an amazing bunch of, ki- of people. God is going to raise you up, and I believe you are one of those. If you don't have a church that you attend regularly, we invite you to join us at Radiant City Church. We meet at, at um, Middlesex University in Hendon, um, Burroughs Road, I think it's called, um, NW44BT. Um, if you need more information, just f- click on the flyer or send us a message and we'll get, get you further information as to how, how to get there. We are looking for looking to, re- to meet you, to, to grow with you. Um, I am believing God for 2,000 kings. Glory be to God. I am believing God that in the next couple of years, God will raise for us 2,000 kings, 2,000 people of influence. 2,000 people who love Jesus, 2,000 people who are passionate for him, 2,000 people who do not love their lives unto death, 2,000 people who are influential in government, who are influential, effective in their work, excellent at what they do, 2,000 people who are brilliant at everything. These are the people we're looking to raise. And I, I, I believe you, are, you, you, you could be one of them. You're going to have to decide if, if that's you. But God will raise us up together and then we will spend our lives making a mark that cannot be erased. Yeah. So if you are, if you have given, that's wonderful. If you are still praying about it, I think you should stop praying now because the Lord said to tell you to give. I'm joking. I'm joking. We should all give. Um, Generosity is always the will of God. Um, So we we, we are are thankful. Thank you for, for your consistency. Thank you for giving. Don't forget, download the notes. Share this if you haven't already shared it. Maybe somebody will watch it back. We know people watch it back. A lot of people watch it back. So do feel free to share again, and I'm sure that um, people will be blessed. Thank you so much for tuning in. It would not be the same without you. We appreciate you. We love you. We are praying for you. And um, have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Have a brilliant week. Go win. Go overcome. In Jesus' name, amen.